Welcome to r slash Entitled People, where we share stories from your lives about people who think the rules don't apply to them and they should get what they want. Thank your friends for subscribing to the channel, and for so many likes. And today we have two great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story. Ex-boss gives me bad recommendations. He's trying to ruin my career. The second story. Owner bashed me to the big company's music director on how horrible a job I was doing teaching but director helped me with new job. The first story is, Entitled boss tries to sabotage my career. Cast, me. Entitled owner equals EO. Nice manager equals NM. When I was in my junior year of high school, I worked at a neighborhood pizza joint that was five minutes from my house. I started in the early summer, and by the beginning of fall, a lot of the drivers and cashiers had gone back to college, right in time for Hurricane Harvey to hit and completely annihilate the back part of my neighborhood. I was the only cashier besides NM, who had also been hired there shortly before me. I should mention now that the EO was a major micromanager, and did all the hiring for all three of his restaurants at the time, not to mention a separate pizza dough company. He ended up closing one of his restaurants, but kept the restaurant that I was working at, and another one across town. He never let the managers contribute to the hiring process, and he never let the managers conduct food menu tests to make sure the staff knew the menu like they were supposed to. He had to do all those things himself, therefore making him late to every interview, sometimes canceling them after the interview should have already started. So when time came for the school year to start, he was never prepared with new staffing to handle the fall like he should have been. And we suffered for it. And cashiers weren't allowed to actually man the cash register until he tested them, which would be put on a back burner as well, while he handled his other business duties. Going back to Harvey, it was myself and NM working the front, the kitchen crew and three drivers. EO's wife used to help out at our restaurant full time, until she was suddenly deported. Probably due to EO's side piece that he kept around. For two weeks straight we worked 10am to 10pm, not considered opening and closing. Harvey hit the week before school started for me, and then we got the first week off since the damage was so bad in some areas. There were virtually no restaurants open in the back of my neighborhood, and we were the only pizza place open for miles, while people cleared their houses of stinky debris, and their livelihoods. We had two hours plus waits on pizza every day for those two weeks. I'm talking people lined out the door literally every single day. The place was agonizingly hot from food constantly being prepared. We didn't take breaks. People were so incredibly humbled and generous at that time to us despite waiting for multiple hours. They were just happy to have a break from their grim realities with a hot meal. EO never put a deal out for Harvey victims, not even a measly 5% off. We ended up making him 30k more than he makes in a month in those two weeks and we literally never got one thank you. We did however get a nice bonus from the thankful people of our neighborhood handing out hefty tips. In fact, he liked to show up unannounced after weeks of not popping in, and chastise us for doing our jobs in ways that he didn't teach us to. Probably because he didn't teach us. I was trained by NM, who found out basically everything having to do with the computer system and daily routines by a former cashier. Nobody had been taught the way EO wanted everything done, because he was never there, and we dreaded him arriving at the restaurant because every time he arrived, he made sure to point out that we were doing something wrong and costing him customers. It would typically be small stuff that most customers wouldn't have batted an eye at. I eventually started training new employees when EO closed one of his restaurants, and brought a handful of that staff to our location. I tried to do it the way I thought EO would want me to, since a lot of my training wasn't done the way he would have preferred. I was still getting paid just a few quarters more than minimum wage, yet I was the cashier that had been there the longest, and was doing almost everything NM did on a daily basis when he wasn't there. One of the employees that was brought over from the closed location was my age also, and had very similar experience than me, and he was being paid significantly more than I was, even though I trained him to do the exact position I was in. EO also rarely got onto this employee for anything, and anything, and saved his chastising for all his young female staff. There was a bunch of drama that played out throughout the remaining few months that I worked there, including a failed restaurant inspection, and a tip that should have led to our location being shut down. The owner's suspected side piece that was only a few years older than us being brought to our location, to rat us out for anything that went wrong. Text leaking that confirmed the owner was in a relationship with said side piece, although he religiously denied such a thing. NM being fired leaving us with no on-site manager for multiple months, and myself being told I would get a raise, and then never getting it that ultimately resulted in all of his cashiers leaving the restaurant in a week besides two. The only experienced one that stayed was the male employee that had been paid more than all of us from the beginning, and he got a hefty raise. 
not to mention the shift lead position I should have had all along. EO was peeved and sent myself and one of my coworkers threats that he would press charges on us if he ever saw us at one of his locations again. He was so threatened by a couple of high school girls, probably because he knew how much dirt we had on him and his business. Lots of sketchy stuff happened while we worked there. Flash forward to the next year, I had graduated high school at this point and was currently being routinely investigated for a security clearance needed for my job. I had told EO long ago when I initially interviewed for my position at the pizza joint that this job was my dream and I had already started the process of signing up while I worked there. So the investigation was ongoing. They were talking to all my ex-employers and coworkers and trying to get a feel for me. When it comes time for EO to tell them about my time working for him, he tells them that I had made it my mission to undermine his business and livelihood, that I was a troubled employee for him. I could not follow orders for the life of me. I stole money and it would be a mistake to give me the position I was aiming for. This was obviously concerning to the people investigating my character, and they had to pause my routine investigation to open another investigation, and make sure I wasn't the SH head that he made me out to be. I had to give a testimony against his claims, and go into detail about my experience working for him, give him all my coworker information including NM, who all vouched on my behalf. It was plain and obvious that this was the last low blow he could make against me, and he tried his best to take advantage of it. Maybe short-sighted on his part, because my record was pristine, and there was nothing to make the investigators believe his claims were true. They had to pause my initial investigation on his claims due to policy, and once they talked to myself and my coworkers again, all was cleared and I was good to go. I never had legitimate proof of anything I could use against EO to get back at him at all the horrible things he did as a business owner. He prided himself so much on being educated at the University of Texas Business School and winning second and third places at multiple national pizza competitions. He had this huge grandiose sense of self, and I honestly believe he thinks he's untouchable. I went back months ago and ordered a pizza from the restaurant again, even though I despise EO. The food was always really good there. This time the pizza was lacking the in-depth flavor it once had, and was replaced with double the amount of salt normally used. I found out shortly after that his lead cook of 10 plus years had finally gotten sick of his BS and quit. That in itself was sweet sweet revenge. So I want to share with you guys some of the crazy stuff that happened there just because some of it's too insane not to share. When I say working here was a roller coaster, I mean it. My coworkers and I bonded over how insane working here was. Here's some key things I can remember made us go WTF. EO's wife would help run our location the first couple of months I worked there, and EO and Sidepiece worked at the other location. EO knows Sidepiece and wife hate each other, so he knows they can't work together, but Sidepiece complained constantly that the location she was at was too far a commute for her. Suddenly, wife is deported out of seemingly nowhere, and within months, side piece has moved to our location. Side piece has a huge month and hinted that she may have handled the wife's situation. EO hooked up with side piece initially when she was only 17. EO pays side piece's mother a certain amount of money each month to not rat him out about it. And get this, he bought and placed a trailer for side piece on his own property, the same property that he lives at and shared with his wife before she was deported. One of the employees brought over to our location from the closed restaurant was an extreme goody two shoes but as a grown woman in her 30s. She could not be trusted to handle the smallest of tasks before getting completely frazzled out and unreliable. And then when we failed working a shift that two people should have been on basically by ourselves, she would report whatever failure of the day to EO. She and Side Piece also did not get along very well, but that didn't stop her from having a threesome with Side Piece and EO. Side Piece had gotten super upset and sent the previously mentioned Goody Two Shoes employee screenshots of text between her and EO, where he basically broke up with her but also briefly hinted to an unspeakable act that he made Side Piece perform on a dog. And Side Piece also told us about the entire thing. Use your imagination. Somewhere along the line towards the end of me working there, we finally got a dishwasher in the back, and he and Side Piece hated each other. He was the only one that handled dishes in the back. Everybody else knew not to mess with his area, and we were usually too busy and indifferent to do so anyway. Well, one day he goes to put cups in a cup rack that is taller than eye level and has to pull the rack down to inspect it because a cup isn't stacking in there the correct way. And he finds one of the largest kitchen knives tucked away in the inside of the rack, presumably so dishwasher could stick his hand in there and lose a finger. Who would do such a thing? Once Side Piece moved to our location, she would wreak havoc amongst us coworkers. She was rude, would constantly be on her phone, had an insane amount of bad reviews on Yelp and Google specifically, mentioning her, and was caught trying to give someone a free slice of cheesecake twice in exchange for a fake nice review in her favor. And you better believe she was the first one to tell EO if we were on our phones during shift. No cameras in the building. 
She'd also go out back and drink a beer or three before coming back into the restaurant. She had worked night shift hammered multiple times. EO worked incredibly odd hours, would be in store in the wee hours of the morning, go home and sleep for a few, then come back chipper as can be. He seemed to disappear in the bathroom for 10 plus minutes at a time and had a habit of wiping his nose often. This guy looked like coffee drank him for breakfast. He was always 110%. Yet he was always talking about how little sleep he got. He also rolled his pizza doughs into eight balls for storage. For those of you that are familiar with that, he had a habit of brushing up against the girls working cash register and swiping his hand across our butts. It got to where we all kept our distance, and my friend even called him out on it once. After my friend and I had quit, he sent texts to a girl that didn't work there for long, asking her to send him pictures of her in her work uniform just because. The food inspector came by and flagged us for a temperature violation, pretty common, and had left the restaurant when one of our drivers pulled out next to her and rolled down his window like a weird drug exchange. He handed her a note that said, check the back drain, didn't say anything to her and drove away. EO had told the kitchen staff, mostly illegals, so they did what he said, to dump all the kitchen grease down a drain in the back at night and cover it up with leaves. Inspector Lady found the drain. We should have been closed down because he had been doing it for years, and that was a huge violation. But he paid to get out of it, of course. For those of you that may wonder how we know so much of this, Sidepiece has a huge mouth. And the last story is... Entitled owner was unbelievably rude. I worked in a music store that sold pianos and organs. Yes, I'm dating myself. And I taught group music lessons. This owner, EO, bought their dealership after the previous owner, PO, died in a car accident. Of note, the previous owner and his wife were close friends of my parents. One day, I'm sitting at my desk waiting for my shift to end. We were in a recession, so business was slow. In comes a man and heads to the owner's desk. The EO starts a loud conversation I couldn't help but overhear and the EO starts bashing the previous owner. He keeps going on and on and even insinuated that P.O. was a womanizer and a leech. He most definitely was not. He was a philanthropist and all-around good man, husband, and father. After a while, the EO looks over and asks if I had known P.O., to which I replied yes. He was a close family friend. Both men looked at me. The visiting man who hadn't really participated had a look of good on you, girl, and the EO's jaw dropped for a bit before he changed the subject. After that, he decided to bash me to the big company's music director, MD, on how horrible a job I was doing teaching. My students young and old loved me. The MD fully realized what was happening and helped me secure a teaching position in another city. Within two years, the EO was forced to sell his dealership, and I was happy with my new position. It's been 35 plus years and I still occasionally come across former students and parents who say hello. I've never seen him since. Subscribe, hit the like button, and have a good day.